Hey, it's Art from My New Microphone, and in today's video, I want to discuss what I believe to be the most important EQ move in mixing. So important, in fact, that I often teach it separately from EQ in my books and video courses. And that EQ move is simply high pass filtering. A high pass filter, or low cut filter as some people call it, is pretty self explanatory. It either passes the high frequencies or cuts the low frequencies from the mix. The two basic parameters of a high pass filter are the cutoff or corner frequency, that is the negative 3 dB point about which the filter begins rolling off the frequencies below it, and the slope, which is effectively how steep that filter rolls off the frequencies. High pass filters are excellent tools for eliminating low end rumble from a track, those frequencies that are unmusical and unwanted in a mix and only act to eat up headroom and to muddy up the low end of the mix. Eliminating low end rumble and noise from tracks that don't have any musical information in the low end helps to clean up the low end of the mix and makes room for those tracks that actually do have musical information in the low end. This also helps reduce phase issues in the low end, which disproportionately affect the longer waveforms of low end frequencies. So by removing a lot of information in the low end from different tracks in the mix with high pass filters, we can actually solidify and strengthen the low end of the overall mix. This may seem counterintuitive, but the reduction in competition of low end frequencies and the improvement of the phase relationships between the elements that actually take up musical information in the low end frequencies will help tremendously in the mix. I have a video dedicated to phase relationships, particularly those of low end instruments. I'll leave a card to that up here and a link to the video in the description box down below. In addition to reducing competition in the very low end, those sub bass and bass frequencies, we can push our high pass filter cutoffs a bit higher and reduce frequency masking in the mid range as well. There are even some instances where a track's high pass filter cutoff can be pushed above its typical fundamental frequencies in order to reduce the overall frequency masking around those fundamentals. There's a psychoacoustic phenomenon known as the missing fundamental, where, as the name might suggest, if our ears are presented with the harmonics of a sound, our brains can naturally fill in whatever the fundamental or the note of that sound is. This is a win-win when it comes to using high pass filtering for reducing frequency masking, especially in the low mids where there's often a lot of buildup, as we can virtually eliminate some of the fundamental energy of a track without losing the clarity of that track and what notes it's playing in the mix. There are even some instances, especially in denser mixes, where pushing a high pass filter unnaturally high on a track can really help that track fit into the greater context of a mix. A few common examples could include the acoustic guitar, if we just want to get the air or the strumminess of the guitar without the body, or synthesizers, if we just want the shimmering high end of the synth without the main body of the patch. Setting these very high cutoff frequencies in our high pass filters may make these tracks sound very unnatural in solo, but in the context of the mix, it may place them perfectly. I do have a video discussing the downsides of mixing in solo. I'll leave a card to that up here and a link in the description box down below. Now, when using high pass filters for only eliminating the low end rumble and still maintaining all of the musical frequency content of a track, we must be aware of any phase shift caused by the EQ or high pass filter around the cutoff frequency. It may be tempting when EQing a bass guitar or a kick drum, for example, to bring that high pass filter cutoff frequency right up to the lowest fundamental of the track. However, we need to be aware that this high pass filter will cause phase shift at and below the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter and how this can alter the phase relationships between, in this example, the kick drum and the bass guitar, but really any other low end element in the mix. Maintaining proper phase relationships between low end elements in a mix is of utmost importance if we want a solid low end. And it's important to be aware of how high pass filtering can affect these phase relationships. For this reason, I would suggest trying out a linear phase EQ for these high pass filtering needs. I have a dedicated video where I discuss EQ and its side effect of phase shifting. I'll leave a card to that up here and a link down in the description box below. As an additional tip for high pass filtering low end elements in the mix, we can go about adding a slight resonant boost just above the cutoff frequency to really boost up that fundamental energy of the instrument. This can be particularly effective on percussion instruments that don't necessarily change notes, things like kick drums, floor toms, and even snare drums and rack toms. But it's critical, again, to take into account the phase shift that will happen in these instances. Once we learn the power of high pass filtering and what it can do for our mixes, it's important to restrain ourselves and not go too far with high pass filtering. It can be all too easy to apply too much high pass filtering across too many tracks that will effectively thin out the mix and lead to lackluster results. All right, here we are inside of Logic Pro where I want to show you really how much high pass filtering goes on in one of my regular mixes. So in this session, we will be working as per usual on one of my tracks. 
This is called the book by a project I'm in called Blunt Cousin. And so right here, I wanted to start with a sort of top down approach where right here we have a channel EQ on the mix bus. There's actually no high pass filtering going on here. However, when we get to the regular buses right here, the instrument buses, we see that there is a slight high pass filter even on the bass at 27.6 hertz. Right here on the drums as well, we have 23.8 hertz. These are simply to help roll off the infrasound frequencies that really can't be heard and are more so felt. If I can't hear or monitor these, then I don't really want them in the mix. And so that's kind of what these high pass filters are here to do. Moving on, we see that the vocals are high passed rather aggressively. Nico's vocals here are high passed at 260. Luke's vocals here are high pass at 108. Again, these are vocal buses. My vocals here are high passed at 159. Guitars, the guitar solo is high passed at 144, and so on and so forth. There's high pass on the vocal reverb, on the shakers right here. And beyond the instrument buses, there's also pretty significant high pass filtering going on on many of the tracks, including the snare, the overheads here, the tom drums right here i have a split bass signal right here where this channel is dealing with the low end frequencies this one's dealing with the high end frequencies this distorted bass channel that comes in over top which is heavily saturated is also high pass filtered guitars right here you can see all of these high pass moves so there's a lot that's going on right here in the mix i just wanted to briefly show you that before moving into the more specifics of this mix in particular so the first specific i'd like to show you is the electric guitar bus over here if we look at the overall guitars right here we see that we have a high pass filter at 82 hertz in the case of this mix so this 82 hertz high pass filter means that there is a negative 3 db cut at this cutoff frequency, which is at 82 hertz. So in reality, when that low E string is hit, which is often in the case of this song, there's actually a 3 dB cut being applied to that fundamental frequency. So I'm applying this high pass filter to each and every guitar within this mix because this is acting on the guitar's bus, and that is to help make room for the bass guitar and its low end fundamental and its first frequency. So because the bass guitar's E string is a full octave below the guitar's low E string, there will be a halving of this 82 hertz right here as the fundamental of the bass. So when the bass hits that E string, it will be around 41 hertz. But that very important first harmonic of the bass guitar for presence will be here at that same 82 hertz right here. So by cutting this a little bit, it really helps that bass come out in the mix a little bit more. You can also see that there is a low pass filter here to get rid of the high end information that is isn't really musical in electric guitars particularly. And then we have a boost right here in the upper mids as well as a cut in the lower mids. But for this video, again, we are focusing more so on the high pass filtering. So right here, again, we are high pass filtering at the lowest fundamental of the standard tune guitar. However, because we are going about it right here, we're actually cutting that lowest fundamental slightly. And a short band right here above the fundamental are also being cut from the electric guitars. So let's listen to these guitars guitars now and I will AB this high pass filter on and off. So you can hear that it really doesn't alter the tone whatsoever and rather it just gets rid of that low end energy to make room for the kick, bass and other low end instruments. But what's even more aggressively high passed are actually the acoustic guitars. So if we scroll over here, we can find them right here. Let's solo this. And they are also present in the chorus. At least this track is right here. So let's listen back to it in solo. And I will toggle this high pass filter on and off. So I'm getting rid of a lot of that mid-range energy and a lot of the body of the acoustic. But I felt that this move was needed in this mix in particular because there's so much information going on in the mid-range, especially during this chorus when the acoustic guitars are present, that having the acoustics 
have a lot of body in this section, really made the mid-range muddy and the overall mix sound a bit lackluster. So what I did here was I high-passed rather aggressively to really get that strumminess of the acoustics still poking through in the mix, and then I gave it a high shelf boost right here, starting at 1670 of about 4 dB. So again, that's really just to bring out the strumminess of the acoustic guitars to make the acoustic guitars sound as if they are in the mix, but without muddying up that important low mid-range of the mix. So if we were to listen to everything together, I will unsolo. So these acoustic guitars are very much panned hard left and hard right. This is actually a stereo channel right here, and they play much more of a supportive role than a lead role in the chorus. They are there to be heard, but to not draw attention to themselves in the far left and far right. And before we hop out of Logic Pro, I wanted to make a quick mention that in this case, I am EQing a individual track, but in many cases, when it comes to high pass filtering, I'll actually go through and EQ the buses rather than the individual tracks. That way I can use a single high pass filter on an entire group of instruments instruments that are similar to each other rather than going in and having to put the same high pass filter on each individual track itself. So high pass filtering is very important in the mix and here's just one example session of how I would go about using it in my mixes. So that's why I believe high pass filtering to be the most important EQ move we can make generally speaking in our mixes. If you found this video informative I would invite you to hit that like button and I also have put together a free reference guide for you that I deem the mixing cheat sheet. Of course, there are no cheat codes when it comes to mixing, as every mix is different and demands different mix processes. However, I put together this cheat sheet or reference guide to help you make the right mix decisions at the right times within your mixes. So I will leave a link to the free My New Microphone mixing cheat sheet in the description box down below if you are interested in checking that out. And I will also leave a few other videos having to do with EQ here on the My New Microphone YouTube channel if you are interested in checking those out. So check out one of these videos, get your free copy of the mixing cheat sheet, and I will see you in the next one.